if you are not doing anything among the outside, please just be on your duty post and pay attention to the word. It is a word that works wonders in lives. The word that you did not hear, you cannot receive. And if you did not receive, it cannot bring transformation to your life. Where is Miss O'King? We have not seen her in church. I saw her husband. Okay. Where is your husband? I saw him just now. Okay. God bless you. We went to Oyo together. God bless you. You know, I love moving around with pastor's children. So don't feel jealous if some people are close. Once I notice you are a pastor's child, I'm telling you the fact I give you more attention. Because people don't know what pastor's children face. Their own time, when their daddy died, elders took over the church. Send them and their mommy away. But thank God for the grace of God. They can only take the property. They can't take your gift. That's why serve God with your heart. She's one of them. She's a pastor's daughter. General Vazia. And I thank the Lord for this church too. That's why I listen to the word. You know, their daddy was a prophet. But you know, prophets at times miss it somehow, somewhere. Told them not to go to school. Abby. Especially this is a giveaway. God said this, God said that. Hmm. Well, we'll hear more later. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. Don't just stand up to read. The one who will stand up to read, I will tell you. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. That's the one we are expanding. We are expanding it. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers and i told us that doctrine means pattern doctrine means lifestyle doctrine means policy so which means the apostles gave them a pattern that they should follow on wednesday i told us that if you are born again you should have a lifestyle of daily devotion to studying your bible and praying any Christian born again that does not have a Bible study life is not born again. I told us on Wednesday. It's a lifestyle. It's a doctrine. So I established the doctrine of Bible so that I showed you the apostles taught them. In this service this morning, we studied from Revelation 5, 9 and 10 where I showed them that the apostles gave them the doctrine making the saints to understand that they are both priests and kings so if you are born again you are a priest if you are born again you are a king say i'm a priest i didn't hear you say i'm a king when i said it in the first service somebody said i'm a queen because she's a woman and i said there's neither male nor female in the realm of the spirit we all are kings so i'm a king now the king there means royalty Prince, they are, sorry, the priest there means purity. And in the first service, I told them, I taught them that there is a there are ways kings talk. King don't talk anyhow. King don't speak corrupt words. Kings don't dress anyhow. That whenever you finish dressing, you ask yourself, do I look like a king? That's why king don't expose their private parts. Then I brought pictures. We showed them the picture of the Prince of England, the King of England and his Queen. We showed them pictures of the, the King of, um, of um, Sweden. We even came to our own Benin Kingdom here to show how kings dress. They don't expose parts of their body. That if you expose parts of your body, it does not show that you are a king. And I also told them that kings don't mingle anyhow. You won't see a king in a beer parlor. Hello. Say I'm a king. You just feel hungry. You just enter any bucateria. You won't see kings do like that. You buy suya on the road. You are eating. And you're going, you don't see kings don't live like that. You are representing a kingdom. Say I'm a king. 
So we studied that. If you want to learn more, go back to the first service message. Now, in this service message, I want to teach us what the apostles taught them. Now, in this service I wrote here, today we shall be looking at the doctrine the apostles set for the saints on how to make money. That's what we'll look at. The doctrines that the apostles set for the saints of how to make money. They were taught that the gateway to having access to money is work. Is share on logun share. Work is, let me not speak uh, phonetics now. Work, let me use ordinary Nigerian language. Work, W-R-K, but it's actually work. Is the gateway to having money. Can we stand up to read together Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 12. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 6 to 12. Let's have it on screen. Let's be on our feet so that we can read together. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, 6 to 12. Can we be on our feet? We have 30 minutes, so let's use it well. After the count of three, I'll read verse six, you read seven, I'll read eight, you read nine, you will get to twelve. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw, listen, from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition. Can you see that they gave them a tradition, a doctrine? To the tradition which he received from us. And what's the tradition? You read verse 7. Show us verse 7. Verse 7. Let's go. For you yourself know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you. Now let me read verse 8. Follow us. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge. But walked with labor and toil night and day. That we might not be a burden to any of you. Look at the pattern. Now you read verse 9. I'm only waiting. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Let's go. Not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. We labor so that we make ourselves examples. Verse 10. I read verse 10. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not walk, neither shall he eat. It's neither. Neither shall he eat. Verse 11. Let's go. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner. Not walking at all. But are busy bodies. Then let's read verse 12 together. Not walking at all. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. Now. Those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they may walk in quietness and eat their own bread. Let's be seated. Father, give us deep understanding today in Jesus' mighty name. You know, I want you to understand that every grace given has always been abused. You know what led to this in Acts chapter, this uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 to 12? You know, in Acts, the early church, the Bible says all of them sold what they had. Remember, in Acts chapter 2, they brought the money to the apostles' feet and everybody's need was met from the box. So everybody said, okay, you sell your car, you sell your house, you sell your land, you sell, everybody sold what they had, they brought money to church. So as they put the money to church, they were asked, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? So they were doing that. Then they discovered that as they were getting larger, people were joining the church and relying on the pulse. So it got to point, a point. People didn't want to work again. Everybody was waiting to have a share from whatever is contributed and placed at the apostles' feet. Now that was why the disciples had to now come. The apostles had to now come. We have to set a standard for these people. Listen, can I tell this truth? Hard work, commitment to hard work is a doctrine in the body of Christ. Any Christian that does not love, love to work, any Christian that is not committed to hard work, you know what the Bible says? He said, we should not allow them to even eat. You know, people want to ride on your conscience at times. 
In fact, was it not on Friday or on Saturday or Friday? I can't remember. We we're going home. And where I stood, about two or three people came around. Sir, please, please, I'm hungry. This one will too. Sir, please, I'm hungry. In fact, to the point that a girl of about nine years old came and said, Sir, please, I'm hungry. I said, Where is your mom? He said, We don't have food at home. That's why my mom sent me out to go and beg. Ah, nine year old. I look at the girl. I said, Go and fetch your mom for me. Go call your mom. I've not seen her till this morning. Now, which means it was not actually her mom that told her to go back. There was another time, a woman of God, she came, she said she's a woman of God, according to her, with two of her daughters. They stood outside and said, sir, please, somebody said, if I come here, you will help me. I said, help you with what? He said, help me with money. you help me with food. I said, me too. I'm working hard. At first, I prayed for her. I told her, okay, we'll see what God will do. But she kept coming. So the last time she came, I told her, I said, madam, madam, this is wrong. No, as I was talking to her, the way she was looking at me as if I have sinned against God for not helping her. And she left. She left and she was looking back as if she should just dust the feet of her shoe to say, Enyeleshe, you sinners, I've dust the feet of my shoe at you. That one left. Like that, we kept receiving them in church like this. And the Lord is prompting it in my heart that I should teach you. Listen. This is the Bible. We have read it together. They taught them in the church, the early church. Now, and what were they teaching? They taught them that it was a slogan. Now, this is a slogan they gave them. They set it as a slogan, no work, no food. Now, help me preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Say, let that person hear. Shout it aloud very well. No work, no food. Again, no work, no food. That should be the pattern. Everybody should understand that gateway to having money, having resources should be work. Let's confirm with one more scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Why they bring that out? I read my notes. When we talk about finance, the early church was taught that work is the gateway to having. Look at it. Ephesians 4 28. Let him who stole still no longer. Charlie. Charlie ma. But rather let him what? Labor. Laboring is not a curse. Because so many Christians, I don't know who taught you. So if you are saying, ah, I have not come to this art to labor, labor is part of why you are here. Hello. Some even said, do you know how we sweat? We sweat because God caused men. Thank God this is New Testament. Show me the scripture. We are not yet true. He said, let him labor. Why should he labor? Working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give? Which means if you are not working with your hands, if you are not laboring, you cannot have something to give. If we call offering time, you can't have what to give. If you don't work. So work is not a curse. It is part of the doctrine of the church. Can I say so many leaders are forgotten. Now they are now raising members and raising members who just want to believe in miracles. They just want to believe a ah, miracle will happen. Ah, you know, I thank God for miracles but if you don't lay the foundation properly, you can't enjoy it. Now let's go deeper. Let's look at mistake people make today. Let's see if I can take four. Because, because of our time. Mistakes people make today. Number one, I have problem. So I need to beg for people to help me. Write it down like that. That's the first mistake. I have problem. So I need to beg from people. I have problem. So I need to beg from people. I call this the beggar's mentality. It is not a biblical concept. Pastor, you don't understand my problem. Pastor, you don't understand my problem. Pastor, and he said, Munishoro. Now, Torike Munishoro, Munlati Toro. I'm going to show you two people before I go teach. The first one, his name is Paul Alexandra. Please, can I have his picture? Put it on screen. That young man, he had a polio attack. I don't know whether he had the story. Paul Alexandra was a man that lived in cylinders for 70 years of his life. He lived inside a cylinder for 70 years. 
Why? Because his lungs was affected. He had polio. He was crippled from shoulder, from his neck to his leg. Nothing was working. So they had to put, this is this, this man. Now this sickness started when Paul Alexandra was five years old. He just died this year at the age of 75. Beloved, even in this cylinder, this boy decided he was going to go to school. They were carrying him to school. In fact, I read this story. They said he could live outside the cylinder by a technique. And what was the technique? He got a doctor to teach him that when he comes, when they bring him out of the cylinder, he should be breathing with his mouth. <sighs> he cannot breathe with his nose. But it is when he's inside the cylinder, the cylinder assists him to breathe. But do you know that this young man, Paul Alexander, became a lawyer? He went to school. He graduated as a lawyer. He got so many jobs. He defended so many cases. Won and died this year at the age of 75. Which means he lived inside this cylinder for 70 years. If there is somebody that should beg, it should be this man. What problem do you have? People don't understand. Ah, Pastor, eh, Tim, Shuru, Tim, ah, and most of the Shuru that most people are complaining about is problem of my husband left me with the children. Abi, Problem of, ah, Pastor, you don't understand. They sack me from office. Listen, if somebody has beggar's mentality, give him one million, he will still beg. Haven't you seen people that beg you for money and the money you give them, they will go to shop right. And even you that gave them money, you know, go shop left, self. You, they carry black nylon, then they carry yellow. I went to get something at food court. I was surprised. Where I stood on the line, a young lady, well-dressed, just came to me and said, sir, please, can you buy me lunch? I said, why? I asked, I said, why? He said, because I'm your friend. I said, I'm meeting you for the first time. I'm seeing you for the first time. And he said, don't see me. I said, I'm sorry, I don't buy things for strangers. Her dressing beats my own. Say beggar's mentality. Or begging mentality. Say it boldly. Uh -uh. You are angry, Abby. Listen, the first truth you must understand about life is that everybody has problem. You don't know. Everybody has problem. That's the first truth about life. Somebody was sat with me and was telling me problem, problem. She wanted, she needed money to pay and the money she needed was just about 70000 I said, do you know that where I'm seated, seated now? I have two, two children in the university. I have so and so amount to pay. I'm trusting God for she was shocked. Everybody has problem. Stop thinking that you are the only one that have. So because you think you are the only one that have, you are trying to intimidate everybody. Make up your mind not to be anybody's burden. I come again. Make up your mind that you will not become what? Anybody's burden. Anybody's now, another example I want to show you. Show me. Her name is Helen Keller. This one's name is Helen Keller. In her own case, she was born healthy, but when she got to one year and seven months, she too was struck by a sickness. And that sickness made her blind, deaf, and dumb. She couldn't see any longer. Show me a picture. She couldn't hear any longer. And she couldn't speak. But do you know that as years continue to go, they discover that somebody came to the house and made the sound. Bah! And in one of, her, one of the veins of Kelly, Kella moved. And the person said, I can teach her using that vein. That person trained her using her vein. She went to primary school. She went to secondary school. She went to the university. She graduated. She became a big time politician and a book author in America. 
Ah, to buy yes, any one year, seven months old child that cannot talk, that cannot hear, that cannot see. The mother sees her as business center. I shall know one to your love. Honey, at him, you see it's Latin, but two million on the camera. Oh, yeah, with that baby. Don't you have the picture? Ellen Keller's picture. Please, I want everybody to see her. She too, she's dead. She died at the age of 80 something. She lived long. Very famous. I'm waiting for them at the media. Maybe they will show us along the line. Listen. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not allow the beggar's mentality in your spirit. I wrote here, kill the begging mentality. If you don't kill it, it will block, block your, your ability to think straight. It will block your ability to think straight. Now, I wrote something down. Listen to me. There are many businesses you could do with either small money or no money at all. When our ministry got to a point, I and my wife, we told ourselves, we don't want to be a burden. We don't want to be waiting for members to say, Pastor, take. Because some of you, every Christmas, you remember us. Some of you during our birthday, you remember us. Some of you during festive season, you remember us. And some of you remember us regularly. But we didn't want to wait many years ago. You know what we did? We didn't have capital to start any business. We started dry cleaning. We, we, we managed to print small and bill. We sent it out. Some people saw it. They decided to try us. And I called Evan. This is my man here. I know that you are a good presser. You were born into this business. That was his father's business. Please teach me how to iron. And teach me how to fold clothes. I, I put shame, pride aside. And Evan taught me, Papa, tebafe, uh, you know, tebafe iron. Buy it. You know, at first he didn't agree. He said, whenever you get clothes, give me, I will come and iron. So we started. My wife will wash the clothes. At times, at times I will join her. If, if I leave the picture, sorry, I'll come back to it. At times I will join her. Then at night, I will start ironing. At times I will call him. You know when we started calling him, and we, it was clashing with several of his events. He didn't know that as he was ironing, I was looking at it. That was how we started. He got a point. God bless us with one sheikh. A Muslim cleric, all his clothes white, and he cannot wear it more than once. And he wears them every week. He he used to bring clothes of eleven thousand those days, seven hundred every week. And how much does it take us to buy soap? How much does it take us to iron? I didn't buy iron. It is the iron in the house. Evan taught us how to remove stain. I won't teach you. I threw. He taught us how to remove stain. When the man brings his white, he will look at it and say, Ah, white is surely a mama by. Ah, my mama, Emma son will stain remover. Emma son will stain remover. We'll charge him high. The man at the end will say, Ah, he started telling other people, Nobody can handle white like these people. And nobody will know. I will iron them in the night, take them to the place and deliver. That was how we started from that one to the next business. There are businesses you can start if you don't want to beg anybody for anything that does not cost you anything. So yeah. Begging is a curse. And there are businesses you can start with little money, sir. My reverend, a senior man of God that I have respect for. My wife knows him. He told me, he said, Pastor Princeway, Pastor Princeway, I go minister for one church for Elisha. As I they come, I go to shop. I see mango. I enter farm. Pastor, I buy mango. Fooled my car. As I come to where one place for Uli Uli, uh, 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 the Slim Junction, I put table there. Call one mama. Help me sell this thing. I finish up. Pastor, gain day for this thing. No. Only from Ogbomosho. You see him going from place to place. He took me again. He said, Pastor Prince, let's go and see. I went to see a bishop. Listen, a bishop too. He doesn't want to beg from anybody. This bishop has 30 plots of land. So what was he doing? What is he doing? Popo farming. He went to buy seedlings and the popo is Mexican popo. The tree 
some of them like this you see 30 purples on each one i was walking from farm to farm so i asked the bishop i said bishop sorry sir sorry sir how did you buy this land he smiled he said pastor that's a very good question he said when they wanted to sell i knew the man that wanted to sell so i stood as his agent i didn't have cobble i announced the land people were coming to buy my profit i was using it to buy my profit i was using it to buy until i bought 30 plots i said so without cobble he said yes sir until i bought 30 plots I said, then this papa family, how come? He said, I was crying in my room. Lord, show me gateway to success. He said, and I just saw a purple tree. Then I went to IIT. I'm telling you truth. When he opened this purple for me, the seed cannot grow by itself. Though. He has learned how to grow these things. When he opened this purple, I ate one. Very red. Like sugar. People come from, he said, all his customers from my two, from K2, they come to buy purples. A dozen, three thousand. He says, I make 1.6 million every month. Do you know what begging does? It blocks your ability to think straight. Because begging will make you believe that everything should be free. Can I tell you this truth? Nothing is free. Even salvation, Jesus paid for it. Say here now. You don't verse. Let's go on. Imagine somebody watched me on Facebook. I wrote his case down. He watched me on Facebook preach. He now called me to beg for three thousand naira. If you watched me on Facebook, it means you have data. One. It means you have smartphone, Abby. Android phone, two. You have credits to call me three. And you beg for 3,000. When he begged me, I asked him, sir, if this 3,000 is that important, why not sell this phone? Why not use that phone to start something? He just cut the phone. Because people don't like truth. Ah, ah, man, in time, Jesu. Jesu. Okay, let me run. Let this. Oh, God. Quickly, I ask a question here. What, begging, what does begging mentality cause? It makes people see you as a body to avoid. Beg begging mentality will make people to see you as a body to avoid. When they hear your calls or they see your calls, they won't pick it. When you knock, they knock their door, they will be silent. When they see you coming, they will dodge. Let's quickly look at second mistake people make today. Number two. Can I go on? Can I go on? I know I will hit jackpot one day. So I will continue to gamble. That's another mentality. I know I will hit jackpot one day. So, I will what? I will continue to gamble. The ninja bets. Ah, one day go better. One day go better. One day, go better. One day I will try again. I will palm it one day. Sir? Palm one from five. I will hit it one day. Most of you do not even realize that the people that are run gambling companies are businessmen. Do you think they are Father Christmas? They came into the business to make money. But you that are going there to play, you don't know. You think the owners of this gambling uh, 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 sport have much money and they are looking for those to share with. That's not true. They are extremely rich. One of them is a senator in our nation. I don't want to mention anything we're online. 
How did he get the money to campaign? How did he become so rich? If you get to Adigbu Lukesh, that one is not a center. If you get to his place at Ijebu, you'll be shocked. And when he lay, I want to Baba Jebu, want he, want he, ah, want he make him do it. They have made it seriously. You don't base your source of making money on luck. Look at what the Bible says. Let's look at what the Bible says. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. First Thessalonians, please be very fast. Okay, this is Helen Keller. Helen Keller, sorry. That's the woman. Now, look at what this Bible says. I want the old King James version. I love the way the words it used. The old King James. Fast fast thank you he said prove all things hold fast that which is good he didn't just say jump into everything prove it you yourself know that gambling does not have a sure chance Emma thank you ma she's already training to be a pastor's wife Eh, ma, what you you? Now, in gambling, there's no how you can prove anything now. There's nothing to prove. That's why when people call at times, they say, hey, sir, hey, sir, there's this business online. If you put money, somebody came, he says, sir, cloud one, cloud kinikon, sir, if you put money, I said, what do you sell? There are only two ways you can make money. Either you, you render service or you have product you are selling. If you don't have service, you don't end that product. You just say, downliner, downliner. If you put your money, you go up. The woman tried to explain. I said, sorry, ma. It's not that I don't have the money, but ma, I don't put my money on the air. What do you sell? What will I say I bought from you if the thing backfire? Abi, which receipt will you give me? At least if you buy shares, they give you receipt. The companies that are running it for you will they, will, they will assure you, you, you are buying something, but you are gambling. They will only give you receipts that the number you chose come with this number to budget. So your precious time, instead of you to be thinking on how to move forward, you are thinking of ah, this number. Do you think if gambling is sure? nations will not go into it even dangote will go into it he will buy it it will not reach you if the gambling is sure the owners of the gambling company will not invite you they will be telling their children 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 i brought up one video i don't know can that video be can it be played this guy was doing very well in school until he went into gambling he was distracted. It affected his academics. He was about to be sentenced. He got to court. The judge was his classmate. The judge now said, The most touching scene in the world, the one on the left is a female judge. Give us volume, please. He burst into tears. The judge now said he used to be the best in our class. That's why I be praying for your children. And not only prayer, show them the lifestyle of hard work. Let them see you, daddy and mommy, not waiting to say, uh, when they open your phone, they'll be looking for, uh, what do you call those papers? Short numbers. Short numbers. In those days, coupon, no man pay. The most touching scene in the world, the Watch one on the left is a female judge. Over the next few hours, Quick, she will meet with down. dozens of... What you should know about gambling. Number one. The man running the gambling business is a business person. He's doing it for gain. Stop thinking he's a fool. Once you're ready, let me know. Number two, gambling will distract you. It will make you feel that your life is not in your hands. 
that's number two it will make you feel that your life is defended the most and touching scene like in your life is not in your hands. the one on the left is a female judge over the next few hours she will meet with dozens of defendants the criminal's name was arthur booth he was charged the most touching scene in the world, the one on the left is a female judge. Over the next few hours, she will meet with dozens of defendants. The criminal's name was Arthur Booth. He was charged with larceny, fleeing, and resisting arrest. After a series of inquiries, the female judge explained the terms of his bail. Bail on one of the charges is $7,500. But then the judge... No, the, most the most touching, touching scene, scene in the world, world. The, the one, one on the left, left is a female, female judge. judge. Over, Over the next the few hours, she will meet with dozens of defendants. The criminal's name was Arthur Booth. He was charged with larceny, fleeing, and resisting arrest. After a series of inquiries, the female judge explained the terms of his bail. Bail on one of the charges is $7,500. But then the judge noticed something familiar about the defendant. So she asked him if he studied at Nautilus Middle School. Yes, ma'am. Did you go to Nautilus? From middle school oh my goodness oh my goodness i'm sorry to see you there i always wondered what happened to you sir oh my goodness this, this is the nicest kid in middle school oh my goodness he was the best kid in middle school i used to play football with him and all the kids and look at what happened so sorry oh my goodness later female judge glazer told everyone in the court booth was one of the best students in our middle school his math is the best in school not just middle school he also entered the best high school in Miami with excellent results. I used to play football with him usually. Two middle school classmates met in court. One is a judge, one is a criminal. The whole process was unbearable for Booth. He was a very promising student, but later he became addicted to gambling. This resulted in him being imprisoned multiple times. Oh my goodness. Good luck to you, sir. I hope you're able to come out of this okay and just lead a lawful life. Ultimately, Booth's bail was set at $43,000, but he simply couldn't afford it. The judge's words touched Booth for more than 10 months. He was later released on good behavior in prison. Oh my goodness. On the day he was released from prison, this pair of old classmates met again. His family came to greet him, along with the judge. Booth hugged his family first, then gave Glazer a big hug. He promised her he would never go to jail again. Now he is a manager of a pharmaceutical company. He still keeps in touch with his former classmates. Perhaps it was fate that made them meet in court. As he said, her words changed his lifetime. The most touching... Did you learn something? Now, he was doing well until what? He got addicted to gambling. And like I told you, gambling makes you think... Sorry, gambling will distract you. It will make you feel that your life is not in your hands. People always believe are in luck. And the truth is this. Your life is in your hands. Everything you are going to become in life, God has given you. And you, you unlock those things by the choices you are making today. If you are not serious with your life tomorrow, today, your future is decided. But you know what gambling will do? It will make you to feel that, ah, ah I just need one, one, one miracle. And it can compare my leg on. My friend, go and kill that spirit. I wrote here, you will despise hard work if you allow gambling. You will despise planning. You will despise calculative steps. You will even dis despise relationship with intelligent people. And these are things that determines your going up. That's why if you know anybody around you or if you are the one, go and drop that. It's a bad mentality. Look at the doctrine that was given. No work, no food. Let me try to take, let's summarize it. Another one. This is another one. Once my parents die, I will have what to inherit. That's another kind of mindset. I'm waiting for my father to die. Volume please. Ah, my father has so so and so number of land. Inheritance mentality is a bad mentality. 
I wrote here, the inheritance mentality believers. Do you know that if you haven't learned how to build, you will not be able to maintain what is built. If you are not in the building process where you, you know how to gather things, if they gather things and give you, you will scatter it. I know of people that receive inheritance. Today they are poor. A perfect example is the prodigal son in the Bible. My father, my father, you have I've waited for you to die. You didn't die. Give me my part of the inheritance. The father gave him. You don't know that the money you don't know how to labor to increase will continue to decrease. Do you know why? Expenses will never reduce and doesn't stop. The young man spent everything until he went back to begging. Don't possess that mentality. Take the last one. Last one. Look at this kind of mentality. The last one. I will look for money at all costs. Even if I have to dupe anybody. Now, these ones I call them the Yahoo Plus. Jeremiah 17, 11. I will look for money. Ah, I will look for money at all costs. But what do you say? At all costs. And they say, I don't mind who I'm going to step on. I just need to have this money. Look at what the Bible says. As the partridge seated on eggs and archeth them not, the be part. So he that get, getteth riches and not by right, by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. He shall leave them in the midst of his days. You know why? There is a curse on the money you acquire by cheating others. I know what it means to leave them at the midst of a, a person's days, at the peak of enjoyment of life. That's how life will be taken. He will leave it behind. So as a child of God, quickly, what should you do to make money? Number one, find what you have. Some of you have education. Some of you have skill. Some of you have talent. Some of you have power. I remember the man that digs well for me. Anytime I want to dig well, anytime our members want to dig well in the house, they say, sir, do you have anybody? I also link them with Musa. Now, Musa lives in Elebu. He's an Ausa man from Kano. Musa will say, Oga, Oga, Oga. I don't get anything, but I get Fawa. You know, they call power Fawa. I get Fawa. Fawa I get. And as I know I get Fawa, I use my Fawa to work. I don't learn anything, but I get power. Now, today, Musa has over 100 boys digging for him. He doesn't dig again now. All he will do is, if you call Musa, he will come and check the site. Oga, 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 one rim, now 6,000. One rim, 6,000. How much you pay? You agree? You say, okay, my voice, come tomorrow, dig. The second day you see Musa and his boys, he will show them. That's the last time you will see Musa, unless they find a rock. Once they see rock, Musa will come. Oga, Oga, we don't see I'm stone. Price change. Okay, Musa, Oga, Musa, Wafa now. Oga, Oga, this one, rim, rim, 7,000. Gaskia. We we'll blast, we we'll add 3,000. You talk, go talk, come, Oga. We don't see him for rock. And that's what he's doing. He knows what he has. Do you know what you have? What some people have is skill. What does a, a Ronaldo has is skill, football skill. What does Messi has? Football skill. You are not listening to me. What do you have? Let me ask your neighbor, what do you have? <laughs> Tell him, don't lie to me, what you have. Number two, let's rush time because of time. Let's rush time. Number two, is what you have legitimate? You find out, do I have what I have? Is it legitimate? 
what I have, does it not go against the law of God? Which means that what you have must not go against the law of the land and it must not go against the law of God. Because one day, I was outside in front of my office and I saw a woman came to drag a man. Give me my money. Give me my money. I'm not afraid to say. I'm not ashamed to say. I am an olosho. Olosho ni me. I'm not a thief. It's my body I have. Ah, that, If you have that kind one, you are going to have fire. Fire. Because that's fornication. Fornication is a sin. I wanted to come out to preach to her, but I saw the area boys that she came with. I just went back inside my house. Because you can have something that is not legitimate. The government will arrest you for it. You can have something that is not biblical. If you use it, you go to hell for it. So answer that one. Number three. After you've discovered that what you, you have discovered what you have and you discover it's legitimate, it's not against the will of God, engage in the ways you can. Engage what you have in the way. Stop waiting to start big. Somebody say, Pastor, you don't understand. I have driving. I can drive. I'm waiting that I want to buy a car. I want to start Uber. You be thief. Don't wait to buy a car. Start by driving for somebody. Abby, don't even start with higher purchase because you are yet to have experience in that line of business. You can only drive, but you don't know how the routes work. So drive for somebody. Deliver per day. You move to the next one. Number. We are in four now. Three is engage in the ways you can. Number four. Be patient with the results you get. Mr. are you here? Mommy, are you only there? Are you here? Please call her back from the rim. A cabo. Be patient with the results. See, you cannot, Rome was not built in a day. Some of you, you just start a business in one year, you are expecting to get the result of people who have been there for 20 years. So, do you know how many years food court have been in existence? Some of you don't know. Do you know how many years if it's in have been in existence? In fact, I was reading the story of a peace airline. You know, there's a peace line. An Igbo man owns that, that. That man started with Access Bank from scratch. He will be taking small, small money to Access. Access will bring money to him. When the man started growing in business, Access Bank went to meet him. Borrow him money. He did business more. He prospered. Then he told them the ideas he had. Access Bank said, we will support your dreams. That's why that man does not have any other bank apart from Access. He said, because everything I am today is connection with Access Bank. But some of you are not patient enough. Because you are so hasty. You said this thing is not producing as it ought to. It close up. Say, do it gradually. Tell your neighbor. Number five. Listen to this one. Live within your means. Don't make 5,000 and want to live the life of 10,000. Sir, there are some times in your life that you feel like eating chicken. You can't afford to kill a whole chicken. That you just have to go and buy the head and leg. There are times like that. That you just, at least it's the taste of chicken you want, Abby. Answer me now. Ah. Do you know how many head and leg you will buy? They, they sell it at Okiado. Very cheap. You buy it plenty. Will you say it's not chicken you are eating? That's what you can afford. Then you move gradually. You buy kilo, one kilo. I feel like eating chicken, one kilo. But this time you have moved from head and leg. Wait until you grow to the point of you can say, "Kill that one for me." 
People don't leave their size part time. That's why their life is choked. A lot of you don't know what you, what you should not afford now. It's like you're angry now. It's the same thing with rent. There are some kind of houses you can't live per now. A business that is just coming up, you are saying to yourself, I want to move out of this house in Kado. This Kado house is rubbish. They say, where do you want to go? I want to go to Amfani. Amfani, we have one, one room. It's 120. There is one room of three, 350. But you know you can still get one room of 600 naira in Okiado here. That you will remove 600 naira from your account, from your business, and your business will not know. Who are looking at me? Who are? They want to sell one house for us now to Kiado here. They say I should come and pay four million. They say if I if I agree, I cannot even pay once. They say the only thing is that you cannot drive to the place. <laughs> this one is a little bit funny. They brought one Ausa guy that will work in our compound. That new Megad, as he came, he was looking, looking. He said, where I go sleep? I said, you sleep for church. He said, okay, we'll manage. He said, they should show him toilet. He went. They brought him back. He said, they should tell me that. Can he have key of one toilet for himself? I didn't see anything. He now told his friend, he said, at least that place that I use as office, they should give him as a room so I can put his property. And now I said, where is his property? Everything is inside one Ghana must go. One, not even Ghana must sack. Bako super. So I went to Kaidi Bako. I came. I said, wait, now because of this thing, they asked for one room. Now she took on shit for my house. All of them burst into laughter. Make I buy key for you. Even me, your guy no get key for my toilet. My friend, if you know, if you know, say now shit, you go shit, you go shit. <laughs> if you know one work, I better get out of my company. Because he doesn't know his level. He just carries his bag, enter the church, put his mat on the floor, lie down. He has been shitting since. <laughs> so let me tell your neighbor, know your size. Leave your size part time. Or else you choke your business. Then the last one, so I can close. Seek to continue to improve your business. Seek to continue to improve. Don't let your business remain on a spot. Yes, they know you with one small shop. Don't stay there forever. If you follow this principle, I'm telling you, you will see yourself going higher and higher and higher. I'm, I've just shown you the reason why we do not have a charitable charity department in our church. We are giving you the principle, the doctrine of work. So everybody must what? I didn't hear. Everybody must what? Are you blessed? Tell them to bring the children in. No begging. No gambling. Don't wait for your father's inheritance. And what's the last one? Don't look for money at all costs. Now even if I have to step on people's toes, don't do that. The repercussion will not be good. Don't become anybody's body. There's nothing bad in seeking help. But don't make yourself a person that needs help all the time. I have people that I don't pick their calls again. Once they call me, hello, sir, there's a message. Go and read it. Once I read it, sir, we have not eaten since yesterday. Can you send 1,000? Every time. And what's the reason? One of them called me. I told him, I said, sir, sir, in the environment where you live, you can do business. He said, God said I should not do anything. 
and God has said you should not do anything, he said you should be taken from me. There are some things that God will never tell you. Let's be on our feet. It's time to go. You're welcome, ma. <laughs> Rise up on your feet. From the ages past That is why Your name O oh Lord who call I, Is forevermore You alone that worthy Lord I want to hear your voice You alone that worthy You alone. You alone, my daddy. You've been faithful, God. From the ages. Now, can you see that our voice doesn't rhyme? That's how life is. We can never be equal. That's why everybody find your level. Those that are singing, their, their song is slow. You see that they have their company too. Find your, your company. It's forever. For the last time. You alone are to worthy, Lord. Uh huh. Some have gone ahead. You alone to be praised, oh God. You've been faithful, God. From the that is why your name before I pray for you and release you I want to welcome those that are coming for the first time let's receive them this is your first time of worshipping with us please can you come to the front anybody like that come to the front come to the front Keep clapping for them. I'm seeing this anti too for the first time. Jesus said, I know my sheep. My sheep knows me. This anti too, I'm seeing her for the first time. The anti behind you. Yes. Two Sundays. Okay. I'll snap your face. <laughs> Tell us your names and who invited you. Who invited you to church today? My name is Wisdom. Your name is Wisdom? Yes, sir. We invited you to church. My dad. Your dad. Wow. Where's your dad? Okay, you are the dad. God bless. Are you born again? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You've met Jesus? Yes. Okay. That's nice. My name is Gloria. Your name is Gloria. Who invited you? My husband. Your husband. Wow. The Lord bless you. Ever met the, him? Was it two? Two weeks ago, two Sundays ago, and he promised you will be coming. You're welcome. Are you born again, ma? You are not sure. The way you said, yes. Okay. Um, my name is Victory. Victory. Okay. Mommy, Siri invited me. To Mommy, Miss Siri. Are you born again? Yes, I am. That's good. You're welcome. So after the service, please, our welcome team will want to receive you and know you better. So you are welcome. God bless you. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them clap for them I didn't ask you I hope you learned something today nothing should be free nothing is free let's go and rub our hands on the dust let's work let's sweat it out you see results coming you too you eat it with joy that ah this is reward of my labor I pray for you in the name of Jesus 
as you go into this new week i declare that you are blessed in jesus name all you lay your hands upon to do this week shall prosper whatsoever the wicked has planned against you this week they are cancelled in jesus name you will not walk into a trap the angels of this commission will protect you wherever your good things opportunities are locked up i declare them open for you in jesus name go into new levels of honor favor and grace in jesus name we have prayed and amen let's share the grace together and fellowship one two three and let's go